Welcome to another class in assembly language programming. Today we are going to discuss about division of two 8-bit numbers. Yes, so let us see how the division is performed here. So yesterday we saw the multiplication of two numbers. Multiplication of two numbers is done by repeated addition. Right? Similarly, division of two numbers is done by repeated subtraction. That is the logic we are going to use. So the inputs are going to be given in location double one double zero two and double one zero one eight. So we are going to perform 8 divided by 2 and your output should be 4. 8 divided by 2, your output should be 4. When I say the output, the output can be divided into two different things. One is going to be the quotient, the other one is reminder. Here, when you divide 8 divided by 2, your quotient is going to be 4 and your reminder is going to be 0. Yes, the same way, say for example, I want to <coughs> divide 9 divided by 2. When I divide 9 by 2, my quotient will be 4 and my reminder will be 1. Right? This is how we are going to perform the division operation. So let us see what are we going to do, how are we going to store the numbers and how are we going to retrieve the numbers and calculate. First command LXI H comma double one double zero. So what happens here? LXI H comma double one double zero. L here stands for load. We have already seen that. Let me repeat it. L stands for load. Wherever you find X, it is going to be manipulating 16-bit numbers. I here means immediate. Whenever you see I, it is going to be an immediate addressing. Whenever there is immediate addressing happening, the data will be present in the instruction itself. Right? So here the data is nothing but double one double zero. That is that is the data. So it is going to be loaded to HL register pair. Okay, though we say only H, H is a 8-bit register. 1100 is a 16 bit value, so it is not enough to, so you cannot store 16 bit value inside an 8 bit register, you need a register pair. So we are going to store it inside HL register pair. So though it is not explicitly told as HL here, it means HL only. Though you say H, it means HL together. So <coughs> the contents of HL register is going to be 1100. So in the previous case, we did an LDA command, if you remember, we did LDA double one double zero. So that is completely different, fr different from this LXA command. Why I will tell you. In the LDA command, LDA double one double zero means load the contents of the memory location into the accumulator. Accumulator is again an 8-bit register, but you are not actually loading the address. You are loading the value which is present inside the address location double one double zero into the accumulator. Okay, so that is LDA command. But here in this case, LXI H comma double one double zero means we are not talking about the value stored in double one double zero. We are storing that particular address double one double zero itself inside the register pair HL. So HL register pair is going to contain double one double zero. So you remember that. Okay, so let us move on. Move B comma M. Okay, so there is no uh, register known as M. There is no M register you can see here in the set of registers. You also can remember the architecture. There is no memory or M there. So what do you mean by M here is whatever the HL register is pointing to, whichever address my HL register is pointing to, M is nothing but the value present in that particular address. I will repeat, whatever the HL register is pointing to, okay, M is going to be stored in that particular address. In this case, HL register is pointing to double one double zero. So what is M? M is whatever is stored in double one double zero, which is 2. In our example, we have taken the first input at double one double zero as 2. Okay. So where, as soon as we say move B comma M, we have, we should know what is M. What is M? M is the contents of double one double zero. What is double one double zero? Double one double zero is the, going to be the contents of HL register pair. Okay. This is how that is connected. So, as soon as the value of the HL register is known, immediately you should be able to say what is the value of M. Okay? So, every time the HL register value is changing, M value also is going to change. Okay? You should remember that. Right. So, move B comma M. So, M is 2. So, I am going to move that 2 to B. Right. M is going to be moved to B. Now, B is 2. Next line, MVI C comma 0, 0. MVI C comma 0 0 here means we are moving 0 0 to register C. Register C's value is going to be 0 0. We are just initializing register C. Next line is 
INX H. INX H here means incrementing the HL register pair. So Y is though it is to more, uh, it is shown as H, it means HL register pair. Why? Because X is there. X always means we are going to deal with a 16-bit value. Okay, so it is not an 8-bit register we are talking about. We are talking about the HL register pair. So increment H H I N X H means increment HL register pair. So your HL register pair is going to be incremented. So previously it was double one double zero plus one double one six one. Okay, as soon as I change the value of the HL register, I should see what is the content of double one zero one, and that will be your value of M. Right? My value of M is eight. Right? So what I have done, I have taken the second number which is 8 from 1101. Next line number 6 is move A comma M. So again we are going to move the value of M to A, the accumulator. So my accumulator is here. I am going to move the value of M which is 8 to the accumulator. So my accumulator value now is 8. The M value is 8 that is going to be moved to the accumulator. So the value of accumulator now is 8. Okay, move A comma M. The value of M now is 8. It is moved to the accumulator. Line number 7. Compare B. So what do you mean by compare operation is compare operation will compare B register value with accumulator. Okay, the other operand is obviously the accumulator. So compare B with the accumulator. How this command works? So as soon as you say compare B. It is going to compare B with A. There are three conditions. If A is greater than B, then carry is equal to 0. If A is less than B, then carry is equal to 1, which means carry flag will be set. If A is equal to B, then 0 flag is set. If A is equal to B, then 0 flag is going to be set. There are three conditions in compare. Based on these three conditions, your carry flag and zero flag are going to be set and reset. Based on that, we will proceed the program. So these are the conditions. Remember, carry will be set when A is less than B. When A is value is less than B, then the carry is going to be set. We are going to study this in detail in theory when you are going to study compare operation. We will study that. As of now, you have to remember, if A is less than B, carry flag will be set. Okay, so let us see what is happening. <coughs> Compare B. So what is B? B's value is 2. A's value is 8. Okay. If A is less than B, carry will be set. Now A is greater than B. So carry will not be set. Right? Line number 8 says jump on carry to skip. There is a carry jump. Now there is no carry. So we have to come to the next line. Subtract B. Okay. Subtract B here means B is 2. Subtract B from A. B has to be subtracted from A. So now A becomes 8 minus 2 is equal to 6. Then next line says increment C. C becomes C plus 1. So it was 0. Now it has become 1. Okay, jump. Jump is going to be unconditionally. You are jumping to line number 7. Again, again we have to compare the value of B with the accumulator. B is 2. Accumulator is 6, 6. Only when A is less than B, carry will be set. Now it is not less than B. It is greater than B. So carry is not going to be set. So you are going to line number 9, subtract B. Okay. Subtract B from A. A is equal to 6. Subtract 2 from 6. So A is becoming 4 now. A has become 4 now. Right? Again, increment C. Right? I am incrementing C. Next line, it says jump to loop loop is in line number seven we are jumping to loop so what is there it is saying again compare b so i'm going to compare the value of b with a okay here a is again greater than b so there is no carry so this jc skip we are going to not going to skip these lines we are going to line number nine now subtract b so b value is going to be subtracted from a now b value becomes two right so b value is subtracted from a so b value now B value is 2, A value is 4, 4 minus 2 is 2. Right? Increment C. C is equal to C plus 1. Right? Again, loop. Where are we going to line number 7? Again, compare B. So, we are going to compare whether B is less than or equal to A. Now, B is 2, A is 2, they are equal. Okay, if they are equal, zero flag will be set. That's what, that's what we saw. When will the carry flag be set? Only when A is less than B, carry will be set. In this case, A is not less than B. So, carry again is not going to be set. We are going to line number 9. 
subtract b b has this 2 is going to be subtracted from a now a becomes 0 a becomes 0 increment c is equal to c plus 1 so it's c becomes again jump unconditionally to line number 7 compare b now a is 0 and b is 2 now a is less than b yes so if a is less than b what will happen carry flag will be set okay now a is less than b in this after this compare a becomes less than b so carry flag is going to be set jump on carry if there is a carry skip okay go to skip so there is a carry so we are going to go to line number 12 where you have skip what does skip say skip says sta whatever is there in the accumulator has to be stored in memory location 1102 so you can see that here at location 1102 you have 0 that 0 is nothing but your remainder when i divide 8 divided by 2 remainder will be 0 4 times 4 twos are 8 remainder is 0 that remainder is stored in location 1102 right the value of c is going to be moved to a and from a it is going to be stored in location 1103 so what is the value of c the value of c is nothing but 4 4 is your quotient okay 4 is your quotient last line is hlt what have we actually done is i i kept subtracting 2 from a okay my program's logic is i will keep subtracting 2 okay from a Every time I subtract, I had a counter. I kept counting. I subtracted once, twice, thrice. Fourth time, I subtracted, but after that, I couldn't subtract. Okay, which means four times I was able to subtract two from eight. Okay, and the remainder was zero, and the quotient is. Okay, so instead of dividing eight divided by two, I kept subtracting two, 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 and I counted how many times, how many times I'm able to subtract. I was able to subtract four times, which means four is my quotient. My quotient will be stored in location double one zero three. Do you understand? This is the logic for your division program. Multiplication program, multiplication command is not there in eighty eighty five. So you did multiplication by repeated addition. Division command is also not there in 8085. So, you did division by repeated subtraction. Yes, hope you understand this program. Thank you.